Hi, Jared from photo to canvas here, and today I want to talk about a feature that my Sony a7R4 has, and we're going to test it on artwork photography. It is called Pixel Shift. Now, this is something a Sony Alpha camera can do, some models, I'm not exactly sure which, where it takes a photo, shifts a pixel, takes another one, does that four times, then afterwards, in post, you can go into Sony software and you can combine these images to make a massive really high resolution file. So my Sony a7R4 is 61 megapixel um, standard. So that's what I typically shoot in. So I will po I don't know it off the top of my head, so I will find out and add on the screen what the resolution of the pixel shifted image is. I've done this in the past with landscape photography and have not been that impressed and felt the, the um, feature is that necessary and it takes a bit of extra work with Sony software. So I wanna see how that works with my workflow and uh, where it gets us. I am going to use this small piece. It's a canvas print of a photo of mine and I thought this would be a good piece because it's small and it's very detailed. So I thought it would be interesting to use this. We'll shoot it without pixel shift and we'll shoot it with and we'll look at what enlargement looks like. Um, for both, both ways of shooting it. Another thing I'm gonna try is this black background. So I always shoot with white behind my images. And I was just kind of thinking about it today when I was setting up for this test and I was like, you know what? White always reflects light and it's just gonna you know, bounce around and do its thing. Black sucks up light. So what happens if we shoot the artwork with black in the background, thinking that it'll have less effect on the, the piece that I'm shooting? Um, so kind of a little bonus test in there. So let's go ahead and get the a7R4 set up and we will dive into the shot. All right, so I did the shots. Um, I did one test shot and then within your pixel shift settings, which is section one, page three, you have some options. So you have your normal turned off single shot, which was my first photo in Capture One. From there, you have four image pixel shift which still only gives you a 60 megapixel file. So I opted for the 16 photo version, which I've actually never used. So this is 16 photos shifting each time. It's gonna combine them all for an image that is over 200 megapixel. So that's the one I opted for. The other thing you need to do is I originally had it set on the shortest interval possible between those 16 shots. My strobes could not keep up. So I had to go back into the camera and I had put five seconds in between shots. And that way you have plenty of time for your strobes to reset, to recharge. You can also set it for five seconds, 10, 15, whatever you want. And to make sure that you get all the images that you need. From there, we have to get all these images. We have to go into Sony's proprietary software to combine them into one file. Let's go do that. Okay, so here we are in Capture One. This top image is my first. It's a little bit, whoops, a little bit overexposed, so I cut it down for the next series, but that won't affect our, our test here. Um, so these next ones, these are the 16 of the pixel shift shots. So now we're gonna go into Sony's viewer program. We are going to select all the images minus number 60, which is our test shot our single frame. Um, okay, now we've got create and adjust pixel shift multi-shoot composite image. Stabilize, nope, because of nothing was moving. Next. Okay, our image is done. Um, I don't really want to do any of my editing in Sony software. It's still exposed a little bit high, but um, nothing that we can't, we can't work with. So let's go ahead and export this. It's gonna give us a TIFF file. We're gonna do Adobe RGB 16 bit. It's huge, 19,000 pixels by almost 13,000 pixels. Um, yeah, let's give it a shot and we'll open it up in Photoshop. Okay, so when I was closing down Imaging Edge, um, after I had exported a TIFF, it actually asked me if I wanted to save the RAW. 
So I went ahead and I saved the ARQ raw file from those 16 images, and that's what I'm opening in Photoshop. Um, so I'm gonna give some quick adjustments. I know um, that my white balance where it needs to be for my studio setup. Um, I'm still gonna bring that exposure down a bit. That's a little bit better. Almost about almost three quarters of a stop. So I probably should have taken care of that in the beginning. I'm not gonna mess with any clarity or anything. Um, I will boost the whites a little bit. Darken the darks a little bit. Um, the optics, not calibration, optics. I want to use profile corrections, all that's right. Okay, now let's go ahead and open it up. Now this file is 16 bit, 241 megapixel. So it's massive. It's um, at 300 pixels per inch, it's 63 by 42 wide. That's incredible. Um, I feel kind of stupid that I've owned this camera for a really long time and I've never used this. Um, so let me see, I'm gonna go up here. Okay, so these are the two files zoomed in. The one on the right is the standard. The one on the left is the pixel shifted. Now this is zoomed way in, 400% and 200% since this one's significantly higher resolution. But you can see the pixelation right here on that little white mark on that reflection, none here. Um, so that's a good sign. Even like looking down at this wood, since you were not dealing with the texture of the canvas. So you can see some slight pixelation there, way worse over here. So let's do this. Let's say I wanna make both of these 40 by 60 prints. I'm gonna size them both to 40 by 60 at 300 pixels per inch and we'll see which one looks better. I mean, honestly, they don't look that much different. Now, I mean, we're, we're dealing with the sharpness of the original image. So for artwork, I, d I don't know how necessary this would be. I mean, if we're doing something like, let's look at the grain in this piece of wood. Even then, you know, I just, I really don't know if it's worth the extra effort. Um, I mean, this test actually almost looks a little sharper around that mark than this. And this is the single file. So this other file is like, two gigabytes. It's going to be massive. It's adding all this extra time. I know the colors are a little bit different because they hadn't been, they haven't been edited the same. Um, but overall I'd say, no, I don't, I don't really don't think this is worth it. Um, the next piece I shoot for a customer. I think I might try this as well and I'll do another comparison then and do a new video if I see a difference. But for now I'm going to say, that's a negative. It's a cool concept. Um, I mean, yeah, this he's like these little tiny cracks look almost sharper on that one than on this one. So yeah, there you go. So there you go. That took a bunch of time. Um, I really don't think in this case there was any purpose to it. So I don't really see what the purpose would be if I'm shooting a you know, a 30 by 40 painting. Um, I will try it next time a customer brings a piece in with a more, you know, real life application. But to me, I'm kind of looking at it like when I scan an eight by 10, like an old film eight by 10, I can scan it at 2400 or I can scan it at 600. The results aren't gonna be that much different because you still only have the sharpness of the original image. So that extra PPI doesn't really do anything, right? That's the way I'm looking at it at least. So with this, you know, this is a pretty sharp image, but it's printed on canvas, which decreases the sharpness. Most paintings, most artwork 
is not that sharp. I mean, it's stuff that's painted with a paintbrush, so it's not super, super sharp. Um, there is still detail, but I just, I, I don't think it's the same. I think this might be more practical in a landscape setting or something like that, or, you know, if you're shooting a really wide cityscape, um, like this kind of shot in real life. All right, so I feel like kind of a dope. While I was editing this video, I was listening to my own words, and I realized how much better this would work in certain applications. So I feel like for my test, instead of shooting this tiny piece and trying to enlarge it, because like I said, I mean, you only have what you're starting with. I think that was the wrong approach. What I should have done is shoot something big with, with someone who does a large piece of art and has the intention of printing it really large. I can see how this could be a huge advantage because, you know, recently I shot these pieces that were like five foot by eight foot tall, massive things, and they were pretty detailed. Now I'm getting that massive thing a massive image with my camera and I'm shrinking it down to this image that at my print resolution of 300 pixels per inch is like 20 inches. So I'm getting this massive piece, I'm shrinking it, and then I'm re-enlarging it if they want to print it at life size or any bigger than that, than that small amount. So I think what would really be helpful is to actually use this when I'm printing even something that's like you know, four foot by five foot, which I, I shoot a fair amount of those. That's significantly larger than my standard 61 megapixel file at a standard 300 pixel per inch print resolution. So I'm gonna do a part two for this video and I'm sorry if this was a waste of your time, but uh, maybe you learned something like I did in the process and I wanna shoot something big and I wanna you know, shrink it down onto my camera sensor, then I'll do another sh 16 shots, and I will edit those, and I will, without actually printing a new giant print, I will, you know, just enlarge it in Photoshop where I'm looking at it and I can see if we did print it that size, what would be the difference in detail. So, in this application, I don't think it was helpful, but again, we're trying to produce something that's not there. We're trying to take a, you know, a small image and make it bigger when something that would be more helpful with that is like today, like Gigapixel AI, some of today's software that can actually fill that stuff in and create sharpness that wasn't actually there to begin with. But I think with, with the art, I think a large piece would be much better suited. So that's what we're gonna try. And when I do that, I'll post a video of it here. I hope this was helpful. Uh, if it was, please thumbs up the video, subscribe to the channel. Comments and questions in the comments below are always welcome and encouraged. Thank you for your time, and I'll see you next time.